I'm Deborah Borden. I'm with the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission, and I'm an Associate General Counsel. This is our Zoning 101. Welcome. We are going to get started with our topics of discussion. We're going to talk about planning versus zoning. What's the difference? We're going to tell you how zoning works. We're going to go over the zoning basics. We're going to tell you what an overlay zone and what a site plan is. We're also going to discuss the site plan review process in Prince George's County. What is FAR? And that stands for floor area ratio. The players and decision makers that make up the decision making process in this county. The types of zoning codes and zoning do's and don'ts. First, we'll cover planning versus zoning. They are not the same thing. Planning involves goal setting, a vision for the future, what we aspire to be. Planning involves the general plan, the area master plans, the sector plans, and functional plans that we have for the county. Zoning is very different. It involves the types of uses that are allowed on property, the density, the overall density for an area, the amount of open space that's required when a project comes in the required parking, lot coverage. Zoning is regulatory, so it's enforceable law. The zoning ordinance divides the county into zones or zoning districts. It defines what can be built and what uses are permitted in those zones. Cities and counties usually use zoning to protect the character of an area, prevent overcrowding of land, and leave light and air around buildings. Zoning generally guides where people live and work, where businesses and industries are located, and usually in accordance with a general plan or a comprehensive plan that's done for a particular period of time. Overlay zones are zones that add regulations or development standards like height or setback in addition to or instead of the underlying zone district. Overlay zones are usually designed to address a specific concern in an area, like an environmental feature, revitalization efforts, or protecting historic areas. Site plans are detailed drawings that show existing and proposed development on a specific property. They're site-specific and they're focused on physical development, not use. Use is determined when you put the zoning on the property. Site plans are, are used when you bring a project in to say, this is where I want the building placed, this is where my parking is going to be. Site plans are very physical. The review of site plans includes landscaping, making sure there's enough, making sure the variety is there, making sure that it's placed in the appropriate places, sometimes to screen things like parking and trash receptacles. Stormwater management, architecture, signs, lighting are all things that come in and are reviewed by our agency um, under the site plan application. The site plan review process normally takes three to four months to go through the review and referral process. Once the planning board approves or denies the site plan, an appeal can be taken to the district council and then an appeal can be taken to circuit court. The three to four month time frame only involves the planning department and the planning board's process. After it's done with that process, it could be an additional period of time if the case is appealed. The other application types that we deal with on a regular basis, zoning map amendments. If a particular property owner wants to change their zoning, they can have an application reviewed by us for a zoning map amendment to change their zoning district. That is a particular process that has to be done in accordance with state law. The state law requires certain findings have to be made in order to approve that type of amendment. We also deal with special exceptions, which are specific types of, of permitted uses. They are permitted with conditions, and these uses have to be approved by the district council. We have special permits. We have certified non-conforming uses. Non-conforming uses occur when the law changes, but a property or use is already in existence. A non-conforming use 
is a legal use, but if it ceases to exist, then the non-conforming legal use can be lost. FAR is a method of determining density. FAR stands for floor area ratio. It's the ratio between the net floor area of a building to the lot area. So as you can see, the more lot coverage you get, the lower the building height generally can be. If you cover less of the lot, the higher the building can be for the same FAR. These are visual representations of FAR. It's often easier to see FAR than it is to explain a one and a two. Uh, it, 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 you can, as you can see from the graphic, as you get a smaller building, smaller footprint of the building, the building gets taller. The players and decision makers in the zoning process are very involved in different aspects of zoning. We have the district council, the zoning hearing examiner, the planning board, the board of appeals, the people's zoning council. These agencies and or people have different roles in the planning and zoning process. Some of them are advisory and some of them are approval agencies. All of them work together in order to approve subdivisions and zoning in Prince George's County. The other players in the zoning process are referral agencies. They often get referrals of application proposals from the planning department so that they can review them and comment on them in their particular area of expertise. State Highway Administration, for instance, regulates Maryland roads that are within Prince George's County. So if, if there is a particular development that's proposed on a Maryland State Road, the State Highway Administration would weigh in with comments on how that development will be served by that road. There are different types of zoning codes. Conventional zoning code is use-based. That means separate uses. You would want to separate industrial uses from residential uses, for instance. Conventional zoning codes often uh, have regulations about the bulk and height of buildings in particular districts. They may have single-use districts, like residential. Um, they may have mixed-use districts. They often have development and design standards. And most conventional zoning codes have parking standards. A conventional zoning code would result in your traditional subdivision a subdivision that has maybe one or two entry or exit points that is very self-contained, your traditional subdivision. A form-based code is really focused on the bulk and design of buildings. It is not focused on the use at all. Form-based codes are designed to simplify the use lists because they're not focused on the uses and they increase the emphasis on design and architecture. Form-based codes use a lot of graphics in the code to show you this is what we want to see as opposed to telling you what use you have to put in the building. A hybrid zoning code takes a little bit of both. It takes the best of both worlds. Uh, generally, form-based codes are good for small, compact, urban areas. You would never use a form-based code to cover the entire county of Prince George's. That wouldn't work. We have a number of areas in Prince George's that are rural and suburban. So you wouldn't want to use a form-based code for those types of areas. But form-based codes can be very useful in compact areas where you want to urbanize. A hybrid zoning code that uses both form-based and conventional can look like this. It can create neighborhoods, not subdivisions. Interconnected neighborhoods where you can get from one place to another through the neighborhood. Our zoning code currently looks like this. It is very conventional. Lots of words and about a thousand pages. Our new zoning code could look like this. Many more charts many more graphics, a lot easier to read, 
and a lot easier to understand. Our zoning dues. We want to simplify our regulations so that developers, community members, council members, everyone who reads them should be able to understand them. You should not need a PhD to understand what you can and can't do on your property. We want to separate planning from zoning. These are different and they should be treated differently in our code. We want to understand the limit limitations of planning and zoning. These are tools that can't create markets, demand, or economic prosperity, but they can act as a roadblock to good, smart development. These are our do nots. We do not want to do this in our new code. We don't want to complicate matters that can and should be simple. We don't want to forget that this new code should serve the county well into the future. It may be another 50 years before it's rewritten again. And we don't want to forget about the priorities of the general plan. We want to be bold, but we want to make sure that the priorities of the general plan shine through in our new code. Thank you for listening today. I hope you learned a lot. If you would like, please contact the Maryland Capital Park and Planning Commission if you have any questions about development in Prince George's County. Thank you.